Why, hello, Mrs. Twit. Hello, Mr. Twit. Are we ready to continue our read aloud? Oh! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where were we? Next chapter The Funny Walking Stick. To pay Mrs. Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr. Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of the bed and took her walking stick downstairs to his work shed. There he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. This made the stick longer, but the difference was so small the next morning, Mrs. Twit didn't notice it. The following night, Mr. Twit stuck on another tiny bit of wood. Every night, he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He did it very neatly so that the extra bits looked like a part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, Mrs. Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now, when something is growing very, very slowly, it is almost impossible to notice happening. You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by, but you wouldn't think it, would you? It's happening so slowly, you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs. Twit's walking stick. It was so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting, even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr. Twit said to her one day. Why, so it is, Mrs. Twit said, looking at the stick. Oh, I had a feeling there was something wrong but I couldn't for the life of me think what it was. Oh, there's something wrong, all right, Mr. Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened? Mrs. Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. It must suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr. Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth has happened? cried Mrs. Twit. It's not the stick, it's you! Said Mr. Twit, grinning horribly. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noting, noticing it for some time now. That's not true! cried Mrs. Twit. You're shrinking, woman, said Mr. Twit. It's not possible. Oh, yes, it jolly well is, said Mr. Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old goat, and See how much you've shrunk in comparison. You've got the shrinks, that's what you've got. You've got the dreaded shrinks. Mrs. Twit began to feel so trembly she had to sit down. Mrs. Twit has the shrinks. As soon as Mrs. Twit sat down, Mr. Twit pointed at her and shouted, well, there you are, you're sitting in your old chair, and you've shrunk so much, your feet aren't even touching the ground. Mrs. Twit looked down at her feet, and by golly, the man was right. Her feet were not touching the ground. Mr. Twit, you see, had been just as clever with the chair as he'd been with the walking stick. Every night when he had gone downstairs and stuck a little bit extra onto the stick, he had done the same to the four legs of Mrs. Twit's chair. Shoot. 
just look at you sitting there in your same old chair, he cried, and you've shrunk so much, your feet are dangling in the air. Mrs. Twit went white with fear. You've got the shrinks, cried Mr. Twit, pointing his finger at her like a pistol. You've got them badly. You've got the most terrible case of shrinks I've ever seen. Mrs. Twit became so friend she began to dribble. But Mr. Twit, still remembering the worms in his spaghetti, didn't feel sorry for her at all. I suppose you know what happens to you when you get the shrinks. What? he said. Gasped yes, Mrs. Twit. What happens? Well, your head shrinks into your neck. And your neck shrinks into your body, and your body shrinks into your legs, and your legs shrink into your feet. And in the end, there's nothing left except a pair of shoes and a bundle of old clothes. I can't bear it, cried Mrs. Twit. It's a terrible disease, said Mrs. Twit, the worst in the world. How long have I got, cried Mrs. Twit. How long before I finish up a bundle of old clothes and a pair of shoes? Mr. Twit put on a put on a very solemn face. <coughs> hmm. At the rate you're going, he said, shaking his head sadly. Oh, I'd say not more than ten or eleven days. But isn't there many thing we can do? Cried Mrs. Twit. There's only one cure for the shrinks, said Mr. Twit. Tell me, she cried. Or oh, tell me quickly. We'll have to hurry, said Mr. Twit. I'm ready. I'll hurry. I'll do anything you say, cried Mrs. Twit. You won't last long if you don't, said Mr. Twit, giving her another grisly grin. What is it I must do? cried Mrs. Twit, clutching her cheeks. <clears throat> You've got to be stretched, said Mr. Twit. Mrs. Twit gets a stretching. Mr. Twit let Mrs. Twit outdoors where he had everything ready for the great stretching. He had 100 balloons and lots of string. He had a gas cylinder for filling the balloons. He had fixed an iron ring into the ground. Stand here, he said, pointing to the iron ring. He then tied Mrs. Twit's ankles to the iron ring. When that was done, he began filling the balloons with gas. Each balloon was on a long string, and when it was filled with gas, it pulled on its string, trying to go up and up. Mr. Twit tied the ends of the strings to the top half of Mrs. Twit's body, some he tied around her neck, some under her arms, some to her wrists, and some even to her hair. Soon there were 50 colored balloons floating in the air above Mrs. Twit's head. Can you feel them stretching you? asked Mr. Twit. Oh, I can! Oh, I can! cried Mrs. Twit. They're stretching me like mad! He put on another ten balloons. The upward pull became, became very strong. Mrs. Twit was quite helpless now. With her feet tied to the ground and her arms pulled upward by the balloons, she was unable to move. She was a prisoner, and Mr. Twit had intended to go away and leave her like that for a couple of days and nights to teach her a lesson. In fact, he was just about to leave when Mrs. Twit opened her big mouth and said something silly. Are you sure my feet are tied properly to the ground? She gasped. If those strings around my ankles break, it'll be goodbye for me. And that's what gave Mr. Twit his second nasty idea. <laughs>